Welcome to another Technics turntable repair video. This time we are going to work on a tone arm on this gold Technics limited edition. We covered this before in a previous video, so uh, we're quickly going to go over taking it apart. We removed the feet, we remove all of the screws from the rubber base. There is the four screws in the corner. There are the eight, uh, the long screws on the outer side, and then the shorter screws in the center. We now have the screws that hold the plastic in place. Sometimes that can be a little bit stubborn. Now we remove the cable retention. Let's pop the clip off. Remove the three screws that hold the tone arm in place. Desolder the wires that come down the tone arm. And then remove the screws for the wire PCB. So there we go, we have removed the tone arm from the turntable and we can set that to one side for the moment. First we're going to remove the counterweight and then we're going to pull out the arm lift. Now we're going to start disassembling the turn arm and we want to remove the screws that hold the arm lock in place and then we want to remove the C-clip. You might be able to get a tool for this. You can do it with a good screwdriver as long as you're careful and be careful that it doesn't fly out all over the place. Now we can remove the main part of the base. And then the height adjustment ring. This one was really stiff, so I use one of these grips to loosen it off. Let's give this a good clean and just remove any large particles. Get in those uh, threads. Like this one was really stiff, so it's, it's good that we clean those threads as best we can. And then I just use some light oil on those thinner threads. It's important that you lubricate both of them uh, because the height adjustment relies on, on both of those threads to work. Don't screw it all the way down, you want to leave a small gap. And now we're going to just clean up the, the threads on the other side. Now we're going to uh, start to disassemble the mechanics in the arm. First, we remove the arm lift. That's just a simple screw on the top. Then we remove the, the friction lift. Just the two screws for that. Sometimes this can be a little bit tricky to come out. You just have to give it a good wiggle. Now we remove the whole of the plastic base. And we have two screws that hold that in place. Sometimes they could also be a third. I think that's more on the on the 1200s rather than the 1210s. Then that now will just pull out. Now we have the two screws that actually hold the arm, the turn arm into the base. The 
up will now just pull out. And we'll just give that a quick wipe down while we've got it in pieces. Now we're going to start putting things back together again and the first problem is the armrest. You can actually do this without taking the whole thing apart. Um, you do have to take it out of the turntable though. It's quite difficult to get access to that screw at the bottom. I have a new tone arm for this. We have a complete assembly. So the first thing that we need to do is put the wires back in. You can see there that that small triangle gap is where the wires need to go in. I get so many turntables come in where they just put the wires through the hole in the middle. And that stops the, the tone arm from moving correctly and also eventually damages those five wires. We can see there how I fed those wires through. That's one of the first things that's very important in reassembling the tone arm. Now we put the screws back in that hold the tone arm in place. Next we're going to put the plastic section back in. Make sure the anti-skate is set to zero. and make sure that the, the anti-skate spring is in the correct place as indicated on the video. Now we need to feed the five wires through that center point of the plastic. And then as you reinsert it back in, make sure that the spring is in the correct position as indicated on the video, while the anti-skate is set at zero on the wheel. That is the second most important thing that we need to do when reassembling this tone arm. So now it's just a matter of screwing everything back into place. Put the arm lift back in, that just pushes in, and then screw in the, the lifter. So there we have the, uh, the tone arm quickly put back together. Now we're going to put the turn arm back into the base assembly. I'm going to quickly apply some, uh, some grease, some light grease to this. And then when we put this back together, we need to make sure that the mark on the turn arm is lined up to the one on the base. So that when it screws all the way down, it's at the correct height. You just have to put it to the one and just wiggle it backwards and forwards until the threads latch. If you do it in the wrong place, it will either want to go too far down or it won't go all the way down. So the height adjustment will be totally wrong. Now, when I was putting this back in, there was quite a lot of friction there from whatever was still in there. So I spent a good amount of time just wiggling and moving the turn arm until it started to feel free. Now we've put the arm lock back in place. And on this one, we need to make sure that the movement is good on the actual lock on the top. And then we have two screws that go in with the, with the little tabs to indicate that it's in the correct place. Now we put on the washer and the C-clip. That is our now reassembled tone arm.
now that we've fixed the tone arm it's just a matter of putting everything back in again i did a video showing how to change the phonos so um, we don't need to go into this too much detail we can just quickly zip through everything we soldered the wires back on and it goes black green red white and blue I had one there where the uh, I think it was the blue wire um, where the shielding had broke a little bit so I just stripped that back you can also just use the soldering iron and heat up the shielding which will make it shrink to show some of the wire so before we screw everything back together let's give it a good test So I use a single sided record to check that the anti-skate is working correctly. Just the weight so that there isn't too much friction. When it's at zero, it should want to move to the center of record. As you move it to three, you should push it back to the out of the record. And then by positioning it between the naught and the three, that should allow us to manually control how the tone arm moves. The next test is to put the weight forward and just do a scratch intro, make sure that it doesn't jump at all. So I'm quite happy with that. Move it to various positions on the record. This particular record has an outro of some vocal samples and it also has a lock groove, which is good for making sure that the arm tracks correctly at the center of the record as well as the outer side. So that will now happily sit in the lock groove without skipping or jumping. So this particular one has a dent on the S-Bend, which would have been from pressure on the top of it, which also broke the armrest. So I have a tool which I modified to fit into the bearing lock on the top. So we undo the lock. and then we can unscrew the rest of it. So there are two bearings on this particular part. There's one at the top, one at the bottom. So the one at the bottom is, is one that's most commonly damaged. We can also see the pin where that sits on and that can also lose its point, which will stop the turn off from moving correctly. So we can see here that this uh, bearing has been damaged which will stop the arm from moving freely as we saw previously in the video it will get to a point where it won't want to go any further or uh, it just won't move at all depending how badly it's damaged this is what a good one looks like we can see that it's perfectly round so the point will sit on the ball bearings and the same on the top going to take the rest of this part to show you the, what I call the T-bar. It's the same procedure for removing the, the screws in the bearings. This one is okay. There are no problems with this. The most common thing is the, uh, the, the lifter snaps or the whole thing snaps across the middle 
where the two large screws are. As in this example, we can see that, 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 that it snapped across the middle. Just to finish this off, I'm going to take the rest of this apart. So these two screws hold the T-bar and the S-bend in place, and it also holds the ground part in place. We then have the two screws at the end, which, uh, which secure the S-bend to the actual shell head. So you can notice that the, that the screws are different at either end of the S-bend, so there's no way that you can put those in incorrectly. So thank you for watching this how to replace the turn arm on a Technics 1210 and I will see you on my next video.